As I gather everybody together, there I have a voice. Wow. Good morning. Nice to have everybody with us this morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. As everybody kind of gets filed in, you will notice on the end, either on one end or the other, there is a little black book there to sign in every week. Uh, if you're a visitor, we would love to have some information about you. Uh, if you're a person that's here all the time, then uh, just sign in and uh, let us know that you're here. It's a way we can kind of make sure that we get everybody accounted for. Also, I want to mention that uh, we have um, at the back, there are uh, prayer request papers. And I would like you to use these. Uh, if you need, we can hand these out. If you have prayer requests, uh, let us know sometimes by just passing by. Or, or as we talk about prayer requests, we will miss things. We'll forget them. And if we have them written down, especially as we get older, we will remember them better. So I would, uh, they're back there on the table back there. But I want to encourage you to use these as we are going forward. It helps me out tremendously um, going uh, as we go into our announcements this morning um, if we if anybody would like to visit I would love to visit with each and every one of you um, just contact us and uh, we would love to have a cup of coffee a glass of soda or something and visit together uh, as we uh, get together. Our announcements, other announcements we have this week is there's a women's meeting uh, this Wednesday at not 1 o'clock as it says in your bulletin, but at 12 o'clock. Uh, so that'll be uh, this Wednesday. On Tuesday will be our meals this week. And on Tuesday the meals will be uh, chicken salad and uh, have some fruit with it. That's, that sounds something really good about the third week or fourth week of July, doesn't it? For a nice evening meal, something nice and cool. Uh, so we're going to be preparing that if you would like to have that. Um, the uh, Barb and Victor Vic, uh, are out of town. So contact the church or the church's office or... Uh, Give me a call, let me know, drop me a text if you need a meal that day so we can make sure and get everybody covered. Uh, next Sunday, July 30th, we are going to have a all-church meeting. What does that mean? We're going to have sandwiches after church. We're going to sit down and visit together and talk together. We're going to look at where the church was, where the church wants to go. But I hate to do this with just a few people. I want to know what you all think. And we can all share together of the life of a church. And there's a lot of things we can come out of that type of meeting together. And then we can start working together and growing as a church family. And we're going to do that next week. August 13th, we will be doing, that will be a couple Sundays from now. We're going to have, we're going to renew our membership. Because we are now in the Global Methodist Church, but we'll renew our membership. But we would also like to welcome anybody that has been attending and maybe has not joined the church. Or um, something like that. If you would like to be part of the church, if you maybe you've never been baptized and God's been pulling on your heart that you would like to be baptized and you would like to become a member of the church this is a time that we would like to do that. So give me a call and we can do that. On September 16th, a couple months away, we've got some time. But on September 16th in Troy, Illinois, we are going to have with the Global Methodist Church what is called Refreshed. And it will be a meeting together of worship together. It will be a meeting together of um, getting to know people in our area that are in the Global Methodist Church in Illinois and in Indiana and in Michigan and Wisconsin. So churches around us that are in the Global Methodist Church in our new conference that is just being formed. Also, I received this week a letter asking to do cotton candy at the uh, Fireman's Open House, and that is August 19th. So um, kind of keep that in mind. We need a little bit of help with that. Again, 
I'm the new guy up front here. I don't know all about this stuff. So I'm going to need some help. If you've done this before or if you would like to help with this, let me know. I think it's a really good way that we can serve our community and meet those around us. And if I have a couple people standing there with me, you can introduce me to all the neat people that come by and let me know who they are. Again, it's so nice to see all of you this morning and to uh, have our time as we begin worship. I uh, did about forget one. We need uh, items for the food pantry, and these are non-perishable items, uh, canned goods, peanut butter. Um, what else can we bring? Anybody, what else do you bring to the food pantry? Mac and cheese. Okay, things like that that people can use. Um, so we uh, do that, bring those in so we can take those up to them. Are there any other announcements we need to talk about or any other uh, birthdays or anything? Yes. Cindy has a birthday. Cindy has a birthday. Is it today? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, happy birthday, Cindy. Yeah, happy birthday. Oh, it's, it's John and Marty's anniversary. John and Marty's anniversary. Well, happy anniversary. Anything else? Any birthdays, any announcements? Okay. If not, uh, let us sit back just a minute. And I have a moment to show you. And these are little seed moments to get us to start thinking about inviting others to church. kids doing? Well, we're inviting people to our church this week. And so a lot of people say, yes, we tie a balloon to the little box. Oh, yeah? Tell me about your church. In the eyes of a child, it's simple to invite someone to church. You're just telling them about something you love. Almost everyone has gone to church at some point in their life, whether it's their christening or Sunday school, Easter or Christmas, or even their wedding. Special events just seem more official when they're happening in a church. So it is simple to invite people. Just tell your neighbors, hey, there are really great things happening every week in our church. And you can consider this your official invitation to come back and join us each Sunday. We'll save a seat for you. Anyway, we did have a lot more people we wanted to invite, but we ran out of balloons. <sighs> Do you have any balloons? What do I look like? A balloon delivery guy? Come here, guys. Doesn't that touch your heart? Do you know what? There's people out there waiting for a balloon. They're waiting for you to ask them. Ask them to come to church. Let us open our worship service this morning with an opening prayer. And then after that, we're going to have our opening hymn. So would you please stand with me this morning? Let's, let's pray together this morning. Most gracious and loving God. This morning we come here, and we come here with this purpose and this time to worship. Lord, I offer myself up, and I ask that you be with each person in this congregation this morning. That you will be our guide, Lord. That you will find the love and the pattern to help our lives. 
that you will bring hope into our lives, that you will bring a path to guide us and help us. Lord, we surrender to you this morning all of our hopes, all of our dreams, and all of our goals and our ambitions to you. As we have this time in worship, may we be refueled, refreshed, and regenerated with the power of the Holy Spirit. We take this time to worship, to pray, to renew, to have a rebirth of the spirit that is inside of us. And Lord, as we do this, we pray with hope and confidence that this day and every day we will serve our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we do all of this as we pray in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we begin our service this morning, let us uh, worship together in singing. Would you like to come up and sit with me this morning? I've got a, a lesson. I'm going to do a children's moment. Ada, is that right? Is that right, Ada? Would you like to come up and sit down with your, me with me a minute? Would that be okay? Oh, I got some other kids. Great. You want to come up and sit here with me? I promise I will not bite. We're just going to come up and sit together. And we're going to do this every week. And this is our time when... We're going to talk about things. Is that okay? Can we do that? I'm going to grab a microphone. This is on, I hope. Okay, this morning I want to talk about... Have, whoa, that's scary, isn't it? Have you ever been happy? What makes you happy? Playing what? With my mommy. With your mommy? Yeah. Mommies are fun to play with. What makes you happy? Playing with my brother. Your brothers. You know, I like to have brothers and sisters. Yeah. Does it make you happy to ride your bike? Yeah. And do a lot of fun things. That things that make us happy. They put a smile on our face, don't they? Yeah. Okay. What makes you sad or afraid? Does something make you afraid ever? Never? Wow, you guys are brave. I'm not that way. Well, you know, we like to tell people, when something makes us happy, when we find something that makes us happy, we want to go tell everybody about it. But whenever something makes us afraid, we're kind of, a, we don't want to tell people that things make us afraid. 
And even if we are afraid, we don't want to let people know that we're afraid. But you know, there is something in the Bible that it's in Genesis 28, and it tells us that Jesus is always with us. Now, in the Old Testament, it says God is always with us, and I will never leave you or forsake you. What that means is he's always there. Wouldn't it be nice to have a best friend that would never leave you and never go away from you, and they would always be there exactly when you needed them? Wouldn't that be neat? That is. And Jesus is that person. He's always there. And when we need somebody to share things that we are happy with, we can talk to him. When we have things that we are afraid about, we can tell mom and dad, but we can also tell Jesus. And you know what? I bet if we told mom and dad of things that bothered us, they would probably help us pray to Jesus to make us not afraid, wouldn't they? Yeah, okay. Tell you what, can you pray with me real quick? Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love the kids of our church. And Jesus said to welcome the kids and to let them come to him. And because of that, Lord, we ask that you let these kids know that Jesus loves them. And let him into their heart and to know that he is always there for him. He is their friend forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I have something for you. I have in the past, but I didn't get any M&Ms this week, but I got a candy bar. Would you like a candy bar? Now I think there's a couple other kids back there. You think they'd like a candy bar? Could you take them one? Okay. Now, if you would like to go to children's church, you can. Or if you want to sit with the grown-ups in here, you can do that too. Okay? Okay. Let us continue worshiping together. Don't you love to have the kids' time? Isn't that great to have the kids' time and to get the kids involved in our worship service? Let us continue in our time of worship together. We have two more songs. We're going to sing these. And so let us whoops, worship together and uh, this time.
There was another verse up here. I apologize. We're good. We are good. We are good. Joys and concerns this morning. First of all, I know it is the height of vacation season. And I know people are gone and people are visiting and stuff. But, you know, it's just really bad when you see all of these. And I'm just getting accustomed to where you sit. And then I look over there and there's an empty chair. And I think, what did I do wrong? So... I know that everybody will be back. We miss all of those that aren't with us. Roxy, thank you for playing this morning. We appreciate it. Our joys and concerns of morning. Do you have any joys this morning? Anybody have any joys? Glad to be here. It's good to be in church this morning. It's good to worship together. It's good to worship with so many great people. Any other joys? Wonderful Sunday school class for getting a teacher with no experience. Didn't we do good? <laughs> Anything else? Oh, we have a new secretary hired. Uh, Kim's going to start uh, in another week. Kim uh, Mathis, right? Matthias. Matthias. I knew I'd get it wrong. I'm sorry. So Kim's going to start in the uh, first of August. So uh, Helen will be moving. Uh, we wish we could stop that, but we can't. So uh, a joy, we do have a new secretary and a concern uh, as we have a new secretary. Even though Kim's done it before, it's still a concern. Uh, it's a, a great joy to see those that were on vacation last week or someplace else that they are back with us. It's always nice to have everybody with us. Um, Concerns. We need to lift up Mark or a concern this morning. He's having a, a colonoscopy tomorrow. You need to remember Don uh, and, and their daughter too. Her name is Aaron Monroe. Aaron Monroe. Aaron Monroe's having surgery in the morning also. So remember her. Uh, anybody else? Any other joys or concerns that you have this morning? Yes. Yes, Judy, nice to have you back with us. Glad you're back to doing better. That's good. Yes. Anybody else? And nice to have the Ellerbrooks back. And I, I guess you brought back a, a germ. And so you, uh, ha one of you have to stay home. But uh, I'm glad you had a good trip. Nice to be out. Traveling, yes. Oh. Traveling mercies for the Dodies. Huh? Traveling mercies for the Dodies. The Dodies. They're on vacation. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. And I think I skipped the offering, but we'll go back and get that. I am still still getting everything in order in my mind every week. I apologize. Travel yes. Mercy for my kids. I travel mercy for my children. Travel mercy for your children. Thank you. I am a little hard of hearing, but I yeah. Travel mercies. Okay, anything else? Okay. Would you go to the Lord in prayer with me this morning? Most gracious and loving God, Lord, we thank you for each person that is here this morning. And Lord, as we come to you this morning and worship together, we ask that the Holy Spirit would fall upon this congregation. That we would move person to person and pew by pew and touch us. And let us take you home with us and grow closer to Jesus Christ every day. Lord, we lift up those that are traveling, those that are on vacation, and those that are not with us this morning. To give them travel mercies, to bring them back home safe. To have them help a wonderful and refreshing time while they were gone. 
Lord, we thank you for those that have been traveling and those that have been out as they come back. We thank you that they are back with us and we uh, thank you that they were safe, Lord. We lift up those that are having tests and those that are having illnesses, Lord, and those that are having surgeries. That the Heavenly Father will watch over them and guide them. Guide their surgeon's hands and help them. And that we will find results from the tests and different things, and Lord, that you will guide each one of them. Help all the many programs and things that the church does to reach out as we are to make disciples of Jesus Christ, Lord, to let us go out as those disciples and to spread the love and to let God's love shine around us. Lord, be with us in our service as God's word is sung, God's word is read, and we pray to you that we would be blessed today. Lord, have that one person will take home one word that will encourage them today. Lord, thank you for all of our many blessings today. Have us pray that you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, now that I forgot the um, offering, would those uh, ushers please come forward as we... Uh, Oh, we have a video first, so if you wait just a minute, uh, we have a video first to show, and then we will go forward. I'm in Highland Falls, New York. This place is very near and dear to my heart. I went to school here. It's home to the United States Military Academy at West Point. A little over a week ago, torrential rain came through here and just destroyed parts of these communities here. So where I'm standing right now, the water have been rushing through about shoulder level. Nice to meet you. Hi, okay. I'm Gail. I live After the storms of life, whether it be man-made or natural disasters, people need help and they need help right away. Samaritan's Purse responds right away. We have the equipment, we have the staff, but we always need more volunteers to come and respond right after. Why? Because people are hurting. They're in dire need. Their stories, why God brought them here. We come, we muck out these homes. What they're doing is cutting back the drywall and getting them dried in, spraying some uh, solution on there that helps it dry out. But they gotta get all the mud, all the debris, everything that's been destroyed, all the memories. We take them out, bring them to the street for the city to pick up, and then we help dry them in. It can be hard work, but it's so rewarding to work with other volunteers that are like-minded that just want to love their neighbor and love them in the name of Jesus Christ. Help those that are hurting and suffering. Do you mind if I pray for you, Dexter? Uh, I would like that. <laughs> well, down here. Lord, I just looked up Dexter. I just asked for strength and encouragement. It's crucial that we have the volunteers in the support of the church. The volunteers are the lifeblood. They're the one that come in, they do the heavy lifting, but they're also ready to give a reason for the hope inside of them. And that's why Samaritan's Purse goes. Just like the story of the Good Samaritan, we want to meet the immediate needs of those that are suffering, those that are hurting, but more importantly, we want them to know about the love of Jesus Christ. The ushers, please come forward as we have our time for offering.
please stand with me? Most gracious and loving God, as we lift up these gifts to you, Lord, we ask you to bless the gift. We ask you to bless the giver, that as these gifts are given, that we are to spread the love of Jesus Christ with those around us, that we to be the hands and feet of Jesus himself. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. I had you sit down, and I'm going to make you stand back up. <laughs> Would you please stand for the reading of God's Word? This morning, I'd like to read to you from Nehemiah, the first chapter, the first through the fourth verse. In the words of Nehemiah and the son of Hakaliah, in the mouth, month of Shevez, in the 20th year, while I was in the cit citadel of Susa, one of his brothers, Hananiah, came with a certain men of Judah. And I asked them about the Jews who had escaped and those who had survived captivity and about Jerusalem. And they replied, the remnant there in the province who escaped captivity are in great trouble and shame. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and the gates have been destroyed by fire. When I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days, fasting and praying before the God of heaven. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. from a sermon that was written many years ago. From this pastor's sermon that with the title itself, I Am Concerned, hits us with a gut punch. But it doesn't stop there. As he begins his sermon, he starts with this. Is the church today a mighty art marching army into battle? Or are we performing merely a holding pattern of a fortress of a building and staying inside it? Elton Trueblood said that the church needs to have a strategy plan to attack against evil. In other words, good Christians, we are not to be defenders of the faith, but we are to be on the offensive in fighting evil. He went further to say that I am concerned of a church of 550 members that share and enter into the joy of worship with an average 180 attending. I am concerned with the hit and miss attendance. But worse than that, of thinking of what is wrong with that, And being at that time that a regular attendee was to be two times a month. But in Christianity today, to be a regular attendee in a church is to be 1.5 times a month. I am concerned of the organization, of the group and functioning of the programs of the work of the church. 
I am concerned of the educational aspect of the church. And while the church today has greater, fine, the finest equipment and materials, that we have 335 people in our church area enrolled with 145 attending. I am concerned about the activities that surround our church area and our classrooms and going beyond that. The sermon was written in 1970. And today, we put less of an emphasis on church education and Sunday school programs than we have ever had. He goes on to say, I am concerned with the lack of fresh ideas, with the indifference of lack of motivation and desire to want to grow and to mature into Christians that bear fruit. I am concerned that churches are much like what Jesus saw in the barren fig tree, that if you look below the foliage, you see nothing. You see a tree that is barren, that has nothing in it. It's just a lot of leaves. The pastor that wrote this wrote a very powerful message. Things that I would probably not be able to tell you because you could take this message and take it to any church at any time. While the pastor pulled no punches, this was his first message in the church in 1970. The pastor became very well loved and well known, not publicly for his fame, but for the church work that he did while he was there. He continued pastoring this church for 12 years. He grew the church from 150 attending to 250 at the low point of summer vacation. Over 52 years later, our churches today, we continue to put more and more things in front of God. To the point that the song that was written by Chicago in the 1970s, does anybody really know what time it is? Which basically is saying, does it really matter? Does anybody care about churches today? Does anybody care about the church life? While Christian affiliation has fallen the last year to the greatest extent in our United States history that now less than 51% of people in the United States say they are Christian. And only 30% attend a church in a country that was founded that I believe on religious freedom. So over the next few weeks, we're going to look at a man, a man named Nehemiah. And in a man that Nehemiah that asks the question, does anybody really care? But what Nehemiah did to show that he cared. Nehemiah cared enough to ask. If you look back at our scripture today in the very beginning of Nehemiah, as he starts, it says that several of the men that gathered together and they were there together and he asked, how is it with those that escaped captivity? How is it with those that have went back to Jerusalem? How are things going? He cared enough to ask. He cared 
enough to listen to what they had to say. And they told him that the city walls were in bad need of repair. That they were at risk. Why rebuild? Why fix the walls? Not so much the walls themselves, but what the walls represent in their lives. The walls represent not being, being vulnerable, be not being protected. And in our spiritual lives, we need a protection of Jesus Christ. We need a spiritual life in that. We need to fix the holes in them and repair them. And that is a big part of the church, good people, is they help in our spiritual individual lives, but they help in our spiritual lives as a church if they are filled with the love of Jesus Christ. Because you see, the worst thing against humanity is not to hate them. The worst thing in humanity is just don't care. If you don't care about them, that is very much what Satan wants. Jesus went so far as rebuking them in the Good Samaritan as those that crossed on the other side, those that went around and did not even care to stop and to lend aid to the man that was in need. But yet one that was an outcast of the Good Samaritan, one that was an outcast of society cared enough to stop and to lend aid. And that what Jesus is telling them. So we must care. Because there's plenty of people that will stand there with their arms folded and smile and say, I really just don't care. But we are the representatives of those that do care. And so in Nehemiah, in chapter 1, Nehemiah first introduces himself as a man of humble beginnings. And he gives this prophecy. But who was Nehemiah? Nehemiah was a cupbearer, a man that was not born in Jerusalem. He was a cupbearer for King Ardaxius. He was the stepson of Queen Esther. And so if you would put this in chronological order in the Bible, it would somewhere between the book of Esther and in between Ezra and Nehemiah. But it says, as Nehemiah sat in the temple, and he asked them of what was going on, and he listened. And he cared. Nehemiah had never been there. He didn't know what Jerusalem was other than what he'd heard. Isn't it amazing that God and God's people stamps on their heart to care about something that they have never seen? But it tells us in Psalms 137, a song about captivity. That begins with their hearts were hung on a willow tree and they sat and cried by the river. The people can't help but be connected with Jerusalem. They can't help it because it's part of them, and it's bedded in them, and it's planted in them. So it says that after Nehemiah cared, and he listened, and he wept, he prayed. And if you go to verses 5 through 10, this is what Nehemiah prayed. I said, O Lord of the heaven, and the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and kept his commandments. Let your ear be attentive 
and your eyes open and hear the prayer of your servant that I now pray before you day and night for your servants. The Israelites confessing their sins of the Lord, which that we have sinned against you. Both I and my family have sinned. We have offended you deeply, failing to keep your commandments, the statutes, and the ordinances that you commanded Moses, your servant. Remember the word that you commanded Moses, your servant. If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the people. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though your outcasts are under the farthest skies, I will gather them and there will bring you to a place where I have chosen to establish my name. They are your servants and your people whom you redeemed by your great power and your strong hand. Nehemiah cared enough to pray. It says that he prayed and fasted. He prayed and fasted, but you notice that he used a word that we. He didn't say they. He said, we have all sinned against you. But there's those that maybe think, well, if I really don't know what's going on, then it's okay. If I really don't know, then I'm not going to be bothered by it. In a letter to Mrs. Foote, Mark Twain wrote this, all you need in life is ignorance and confidence. And then success is sure. But in Nehemiah's standpoint, it's not what you don't know that can hurt you. It's what you don't know can hurt you and other people. You have to really care, no matter how painful it is, no matter how much it hurts. You need the information. You need the information to know what is going on, that things in life remain in ruins. And so because of that, Nehemiah, as he cared and prayed, he went to the heart of the people. Because he knew that God loved these people. And so God wept for them. As Nehemiah wept for them, he asked for God's will, not his. As Nehemiah fasted and prayed, he did one more thing. He moved forward. It says the last thing Nehemiah did was he cared enough to volunteer. And Nehemiah was a cupbearer. Nehemiah had what you would call a very good job. He was right next to the king. He was one that was up in front there. And he had a lot of luxuries in life. So as he prayed to God, he figured out that he had a time that God would intercede for him and God would have the king listen to him. And so as he talked to the king, he got all of the blessings of the king. You see, because Nehemiah couldn't just up and quit his job. He needed the king. He needed his protection. And he needed his provisions. So as Nehemiah gets his provisions, his letters from the king, and he volunteers to go and help, Nehemiah left every place that he was. He left all of the luxuries of his job. He left all of the good things that he had, and he went out. 
to help others. He didn't argue that he was ill-equipped. He didn't argue that he would have to leave his comfort and security. Has Nehemiah cared enough to listen? Has Nehemiah cared enough to fall upon his knees and pray? Has Nehemiah cared enough to weep for the concern of the people? Nehemiah stood up and cared enough to volunteer. And this is what he told God. He said, send me. He didn't ask God to send somebody else. Abraham cared enough to rescue Lot. But over the next few weeks, we're going to look how Nehemiah cared and how Nehemiah did something that couldn't be done in a short period of time with God's help. So where does that leave us today? Where does that leave you and me? Why is Nehemiah important? Because Nehemiah is a central part of the Old Testament. It's on rebuilding, renewing, and reinforcing our spiritual lives. It is time to protect our lives. So here's a good question. This morning, are you concerned for your church? A sermon was written 52 years ago of a concern for churches. Does it still go forward to today? Are churches in bad repair and need for reinforcing, rebuilding, and re-helping their spiritual life? Good people, we are set apart from the world to show the world of a way that we are to live as people of Jesus Christ. And so I think that churches all should be concerned because we have a very big job to do. We have a world that has put everything of the importance of the world in front of Jesus. So we can't be negligent. We have to care. We have to follow what God is telling us. It is time to ask God to help us to repair and to rebuild. And then Nehemiah finishes with this in verse 11. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to the prayers of those who delight in honoring you. Please grant me success today by making the king favorable to me. This should be our prayers. We should be praying with, I think we used this a few weeks ago and we used it again today, with intentionality. We have to be intentional of where we are going to go as Christians and how we are going to change lives of those around us. Nehemiah had a very special place. He had the king next to him. We have a very unique place. We have a very unique place in time and history. God has placed us where we are today because God has a plan for us. We are to rebuild the church of Jesus Christ in our communities, and the world around us. And this is so important. But with God's help, with the help of the Holy Spirit, God will give us the power, the resources, and the place to do everything that he wants us to do. Only if we listen to him. Would you pray with me? Most gracious and loving God, that we thank you.
for each person that is here. Lord, we thank you for the word of God that is given to us to motivate us, that is given to us to call out to us to what we are to be doing. Lord, we said, it said that we are the hands and feet of Jesus. So let us go about being those hands and feet. Let us go about being the body of Christ. And let us do what God is calling us to do. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please stand with me? Let's um, just please stand with me and we'll have a benediction. And uh, next week I think we're going to sing a chorus at the end of our service. It kind of makes a little more to me of a finish to me. This kind of leaves it hanging a little bit. But we will do a little bit different as we change and grow together. Would you bow your heads and we have a blessing. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you go with us. And be with us. Lord, let us feel the love of Jesus Christ in our hearts. And to take that home with us. Let the sun shine upon you. We pray all of these things every day. In Jesus Christ's name and all of God's people said. Amen. Thank you. Have a blessed day and a wonderful week.